The warrior trees are looking absolutely broken in Dragonflight. Everyone is freaking out, including those sweaty PvEers. We teamed up with BlizzCon champion Joe Fernandez to get his take on the exciting new builds that might be possible next expansion. So stay tuned as we give you a preview of what's to come in Dragonflight Season 1. But before we start, we're going to be pumping out content on Dragonflight, Wrath Classic, and of course Shadowlands in the upcoming months, so be sure to subscribe to stay ahead of the meta, and be sure to check out skillcap.com to learn about our exclusive rating gain guarantee. Let's kick things off by looking at some changes to Warriors as a whole. One thing you will notice immediately in the general tree is the return of stances. While this might seem like a big deal, if we are to learn anything from recent expansions, it's that warriors typically gravitate towards defensive stance, which is still significantly nerfed in PvP. But since Berserker stance offers partial CC reduction, it could come into play specifically against comps that cross CC warriors on setups, <coughs> like RMP. One of the more exciting changes is that all warrior specs will now have access to three abilities that were previously exclusive to one another. Yes, with the new talent system, it will be possible to have double time, impending victory, and storm bolt at the same time. And speaking of having multiple things at once, two Shadowlands legendaries will be returning with both Elysian Might and Signet of Tormented Kings being available as end cap talents. This is a common theme in Dragonflight where some classes will see the return of iconic legendaries, but this particular combo is pretty broken for both Arms and Fury. The main reason is that they are both on the same side of the tree, making them very accessible for most builds. You might be looking at the other side of the tree and wondering why Shockwave and the Recycled Dragon's Roar talents aren't our main focus, but we currently think these are just noob bait, especially since Shockwave lasts a measly 2 seconds. And finally, even though Kyrian Potion will be cycled out, there's a new defensive option called Bitter Immunity that will take its place, which essentially does the exact same thing, but might actually be better since its cooldown isn't tied to drop in combat. Now, with the general changes out of the way, let's dive deeper into the arms tree with some speculated builds. Before that though, it's important to understand how the tree is divided. The right side of the tree is focused heavily into execute modifying talents, with exploiter on the end cap. In theory, this would encourage a playstyle similar to Venthyr Warriors in Season 1 of Shadowlands, where the majority of your rage was spent spamming execute while refreshing mortal strike. While this build has enormous damage potential, it is incredibly resource intensive, requiring you to have high uptime to generate enough rage to slam execute every global. The left side of the tree is way more experimental and funnels a lot of talents into a potential build centered around bleed damage. A huge part of this build hinges on Skull Splitter, which can be combined with a talent called Fracture to increase the DPS done by bleeds. This could be comboed with the Blood and Thunder talent in the main tree, which would cause Thunderclap to spread Ren to nearby targets. This build would echo a Mists of Pandaria style Arms Warrior, where spreading Ren was a huge part of PvP, especially in RBGs. We say this build is experimental because it really depends on final damage and healing values, but it could potentially open up the possibility of classic rot compositions with Affliction Warlocks. There is also some potential for the modern Arms Warrior playstyle to stay relevant, as Battlelord has been converted into an Arms Warrior talent. When combined with Dreadnought, these two talents reinforce the overpower based damage rotation, which most resembles the current Arms Warrior playstyle. Generally speaking, having overpower and mortal strike as your bread and butter damage globals feels pretty good, since it can be hard to maintain things like bleeds or budget enough rage for execute when there are an abundance of micro CCs in arena and when everyone has the mobility of a Ferrari. Because of this, there is a high chance that the default build will likely include Battlelord, but we will just have to see. But enough about arms, let's dive into Fury to know what to expect for Dragonflight. First up the news that many warriors are excited for, Odin's Fury is making a return. The talent is pretty deep within the tree and comes with an additional damage modifier through Bloodborne. This could be combined with Siegebreaker on the other side of the tree, and with Thunderous Roar on the general tab, giving you three separate high damage buttons with relatively short cooldowns. In theory, this would help preserve a lot of the current Fury Warrior playstyle, which is all about doing consistent pressure with high uptime, rather than looking to get massive damage swings based around longer cooldowns. And speaking of the modern playstyle, it seems like Blizzard is reinforcing Raging Blow as the center of your damage rotation, as there are multiple talents modifying its damage or giving it resettable charges. But for those wanting to experiment, it may be possible to create a build based on one-handed weapons. That is thanks to a pair of talents on the left side of the tree called Annihilator and Single-Minded Fury. In the past, these types of builds have generally fallen flat, as equipping double two-handers just offers more stats, and in turn, more damage. 
it is really hard to say whether or not a one-handed build will be optimal because of this, and if we had to guess, we'd probably assume most people will stick to Titan's grip once again. With all this in mind, the viability of Fury depends the most on Slaughterhouse. This PvP talent is partially responsible for the massive surge in popularity of Fury Warriors. Maintaining 8 stacks of the debuff was made possible thanks to the interaction of Warrior tier set bonuses combined with Reckless Abandon. With set bonuses likely scrapped, it's unclear whether Fury will have enough rage generation to maintain Slaughterhouse stacks. With that in mind, let's wrap things up with a recap of what's around the corner for Warriors and Dragonflight. For one, the General Tree is amazing, and arguably the best design talent system that Blizzard has released so far. Well, that's if you play Warrior. With access to Double Time, Impending Victory, and Stormbolt, both Warrior specs have insane mobility paired with bolstered control and defense. Possibly the strongest aspect of both Arms and Fury is the fact that two of their best legendaries are returning as fairly accessible end cap talents, with the Legion Spear becoming a meta-defining ability once again. As for what comps Warriors might run, expect to see classic lineups like Turbo and Warrior Mage make a return, but with the possibility of an AoE-focused Rend build, we could see the even older Rot archetypes like Warrior Lock. But we want to know what you think. How do you feel about the future of Warriors and Dragonflight? Let us know in the comments below. And once again, please consider subscribing. We will be uploading tons of new content for Dragonflight, Wrath Classic, and Shadowlands in the next few months, and we want to make sure you stay ahead of the meta. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.